All right, guys, Angular version 6 has been officially released. So let's take a look at some of the new features and changes in the 6.0.0 release. Now, as the official blog states, version 6 release is focused less on the underlying framework and more on the tool chain and on making it easier to move quickly with Angular in the future. So Angular 6 itself has no major breaking changes. However, Angular 6 depends on RxJS version 6, which unfortunately has breaking changes. Not to worry though, we can easily fix that and we will talk more on migrating from RxJS 5 to 6 in a separate video. Alright, let's take a look at some of the key points from this release. The version 6 release synchronizes the major version number of the Angular framework, Angular CLI and Angular material. They all are now version 6.0.0. The minor and patch releases though are completely independent and can change based on that specific project. Next, let's talk about the code. First up, animations. Earlier, it was possible to import animation related functions from Angular slash core. But now, all animation symbols must be imported from Angular slash animations package. Version 6 also removes support for the template tag. Instead, use the ng template tag. Keep in mind, we are not talking about the metadata of a component. We are talking about the template tag that was previously allowed in the component HTML. So if you have HTML content that is conditionally displayed, let's say using ng if directive, make sure to use the ng template tag. The next addition is a pretty cool one, which is concerned with registering providers. Earlier, if we had a service, to make use of the service, we would register it with the injector in a particular module. We would import it and then add it to the providers array. But now we can do that in the service itself. And the way we do that is using the provided in property in the injectable decorator. Provided in here tells Angular that the root injector is responsible for creating an instance of the service. Services that are provided this way are automatically made available to the entire application and don't need to be listed in any particular module. So the next time you create a service, you can provide it in this particular way. The last change I want to discuss code-wise is the ng model change event. Now this is specific to the way you might track an input value in your application. Previously, ng model change was emitted before its underlying control was updated. And this was fine if you passed value directly through the dollar event keyword. So you can see that we have an input tag, we have ng model, and we also have the ng model change event. Now on change, we are passing dollar event, which we log to the console. Now this would log the updated value. However, if you had a handler for the ng model change event that checked the value through the control, you would get the old value rather than the updated value. So you can see here that the input element now has a template reference variable model dir, and that is passed into the on change event. And then when we log to the console model ng model dot value, the old value would be logged instead of the updated value. In Angular 6 though, this will always give you the updated new value. Specific scenario. Alright, that is about the Angular framework. Next, let's talk about Angular CLI. As I mentioned earlier, Angular CLI is now version 6.0.0. With this release, two really cool commands have been added to the CLI. The first one is ng-update. Now ng-update is a new CLI command that analyzes your package JSON and uses its knowledge of Angular to recommend updates to your application. The command will help you adopt the right version of dependencies and keep your dependencies in sync. Also, third parties can provide update scripts using what are known as schematics. 
If one of the dependencies provides an ng update schematic, they can automatically update your code when they need to make breaking changes. Again, heading in the direction of very low code maintenance while still staying up to date. So this is a really good addition to Angular. The second command is the ng add command. It is a way to seamlessly add new capabilities to your application. For example, installing and setting up Angular material used to require quite a few steps. But now it can all be done simply with one command, ng add at angular slash material. Behind the scenes, it adds a bit of necessary code and changes the project where needed to add in the thing you just told it to add. In our case, Angular Material. So now, adding things like Angular Material, progressive web apps, service workers, and Angular elements to your existing Angular application will be really, really easy. All right, the next addition is Angular Material started templates with Angular CLI. Now, once you have run ng add angular material to add material to an existing application, you will also be able to generate three new starter components. The first one is material side nav. And the command will generate a starter template, including a toolbar with the app name and then the side navigation. It is also responsive. You also have a template for a dashboard, which contains a dynamic grid list of cards. And here's the command to generate that. And finally, we also have a template for a data table pre-configured with a data source for sorting and pagination. Again, here is the command and here is a sample view of the data table. The last point about Angular CLI is CLI version 6 now has support for workspaces containing multiple projects. CLI projects will also now use angular.json instead of angularcli.json and this is for building and project configurations. Each CLI workspace has projects, each project has targets and each target can have configurations and so on. Alright, the next amazing feature that Angular version 6 comes with is the initial release of Angular Elements. Angular Elements will give us the ability to use our Angular components in other environments like a Vue.js application for example. It will take an Angular component and wrap it inside a custom element allowing us to use that Angular component in other projects that don't have the full Angular ecosystem. The potential for Angular Elements is truly amazing. The first release though will only work with Angular applications. So hold tight and wait for the next release. Finally, a word about Ivy. Ivy is the next generation rendering engine which aims to increase the speed and decrease the application size. Now, although this was mentioned during the NG conference, it is not part of this particular release. It is being actively developed and should be out soon. All right, there you go. A brief look at the new features and changes with the release of Angular version 6. Now, regarding the videos in this playlist, except for the RxJS change, which will affect the video on HTTP and services, all other videos still hold good. And to be honest, the change is just a syntax change and a change in how we write our import statements. I will of course make a video for that particular change, upgrading from Angular 5 to 6. I will also update the playlist title to either just Angular tutorial or Angular 6 tutorial. I personally feel just Angular tutorial makes sense but I'm not sure of what people search for the most. So let me know in the comment section what you guys type in the search bar when looking for tutorials on Angular. Do you search with or without the version number? And there are plenty more Angular videos coming up in the coming weeks. So make sure to subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable notifications for new content that is uploaded. 
Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.